Hey students, in this video today we're going to be talking about how to calculate a straight line depreciation. Now what is depreciation? Well, I actually created a whole other video on that recently. Go ahead and click the link on the screen if you haven't seen it yet. I'd recommend watching that first before we talk about the depreciation methods. But today we're going to be talking about how to calculate straight line depreciation. Now, what is straight line depreciation? Well, it's kind of what it sounds like. Imagine a straight line. And depreciation, well, you're depreciating this fixed asset. Essentially, what you're doing is you're expensing it evenly over time, as opposed to expensing it all up front when you first buy it. So that's what depreciation is. And with straight line, it's an even amount of de uh, depreciation each year. So this is year one here. Here we have year two, year three, year four, and so on. And each one of these years, let's just say that you depreciate it by $100. Notice it's in a straight line and it's even from year to year. Now this can be any type of fixed asset, so some sort of piece of machinery, equipment, maybe a building, or a computer. It just depends on what type of fixed asset. Now it can't be land, because you do not depreciate land. So once again, imagine a straight line, it's linear. Now how do we calculate the depreciation for straight line? Well. There's a simple formula here that I want to show you. So all you do is you take the cost of that machinery, whatever that cost is. Now, there's going to be a lot that goes into this cost. Anything that gets that asset ready for its intended use, you can put that into the cost of that. When you do that, we call that capitalization. You take an expense and you capitalize it putting it into the cost of that asset. Now we'll talk more about that in a little bit when we practice a problem. So you take that cost, then you subtract what they call salvage value. Now salvage value, that basically means the trade-in value. So whatever that asset is worth at the end of its life, you can trade it in for that amount. That's called your salvage or residual value. From here, you subtract it out and then you divide. So this is a dividing line. You divide it by useful life. So whatever the life of that fixed asset is, however long you can use it for, you divide it by that useful life and that's gonna equal your yearly depreciation expense. So that's how much you depreciate it each year. And that represents that $100 up there. That's how you get that number, taking 100 each year. Now, I didn't give you any facts or data yet because we're gonna practice a problem in just a sec. I just want to introduce you to the concept first. Again, straight line is the first type of depreciation method we'll talk about. You depreciate it evenly from year to year. Now, let's go ahead and look at a practice problem and this will make a lot more sense. Okay, now for the practice problem here. So we're just gonna go through and I'm gonna show you exactly how straight line depreciation works with a little practice problem. So at the beginning of 2015, Dylan's Donuts purchased new equipment. So the fixed asset here will be equipment. It's worth $500,000. It was shipped from two states over for 2,000 with an additional $800 in insurance. He hired an employee that can operate the equipment. This specialized worker must have a $100 license to operate and will be renewed each year. Installation of the equipment amounted to $15,350. The equipment has a useful life of eight years and 20,200 salvage value. Now I know you're thinking that's a lot of information right now, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to break this down so we can get these answers. So you're gonna get the depreciation expense per year, accumulated depreciation, and the book value at the end of 2018. 
So let's go ahead and start here. Now, with depreciation, the very first thing you must do is get the cost of that fixed asset, the proper cost. Now you're thinking, oh, it's just $500,000. That's what I bought it for. That's part of it. There's other things that will go into the cost. Let me show you here. So first off, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do our purchase price. So a purchase price was equal to 500 grand. That goes into the cost, but there's other things as well. So we also have that shipping cost, that $2,000 right there. So again, whatever gets that asset ready for its intended use. So if you're gonna use it for your business, you have to get it shipped over. Because if you don't get it shipped, you will never have access to that equipment. So the shipping cost is necessary so you can start using that equipment. Simple as that. Since it's necessary, we need to go ahead and add it in here for the 2000 and shipping. Same with insurance, you have to protect it during transit. So that $800 is definitely necessary. Now, this employee that he hired and this $100 license, well, you don't need to have that license to get the asset ready for its intended use. You just have to have the license so you can start using it. But to get it ready, you do not have to have that. Plus, it has to be renewed each year. It's not a one-time cost. So since it's renewed each year, you can ignore it. It's gonna be a regular operating expense. It's not gonna be part of the cost. Now, installation of the equipment amounted to 15,350. To start using that asset, do you have to get it installed? The answer is yes. You have to install the equipment before you can use it. So that's definitely part of the cost of this equipment. So installation will be added in here. 15,350. Let's go ahead and add this up. Okay, so our cost here will be equal to cost of the equipment comes out to be 518150. All right, so now we have the cost of the equipment. That's the first step and one of the most important steps here. Now we need to go ahead and get our formula so we can calculate the straight line depreciation each year. Now, what is that formula again? Let's just go ahead and write it down. I'm gonna do a little line here so we can divide this out. Okay, so our formula here is going to be our cost minus salvage value divided by useful life of the equipment. That's how we get our depreciation expense each year. So let's go ahead and plug in a few things. Our cost, we just got that. That's why it's important to do it first, plug it in. Salvage, well, they told us it. If you remember, it's right up here, 20,200. I'm gonna divide that here by the useful life, which is eight years. So, our depreciation expense each year, if you calculate that, 518150 minus 20,200 divided by eight. 62,244, just like that. So that's gonna be your depreciation expense. I'll put that right up here, 62,244. Now, what is the accumulated depreciation at the end of 2018? Well, accumulated depreciation, all that means is the sum of depreciation expenses. So you just add them up each year. So you're probably thinking, we gotta figure out the number of years, and you're right. You got it in the beginning of 2015, so all of 2015 is one year, 2016 is two years, 2017 is three years, 2018 is four years. Four years times 62,244. And that's the sum of those depreciation expenses. Again, you just multiply the years times your depreciation expense. And we get 248 
976. All right. Lastly, and I'll go ahead and make room for this here. We got to figure out our book value. Now, what's the book value again? Well, if you watched my first video, you would know. And I'll divide this out here so we can get some room. Book value, all that is is cost minus accumulated depreciation book value. That's it. So just take out your accumulated depreciation and that's your book value. That's the value that you'll see on the balance sheet as well. You just take the cost of that fixed asset, subtract out any depreciation that's already taken place. And then from there you get your book value. So all you do is take that cost, 518150, and subtract your accumulated depreciation. And you get 269174. And again, that's the number that goes on your balance sheet. So I'll go ahead and write that out just so you have the numbers there. So all I did is I took the cost, which is 518150, subtracted accumulated depreciation. And that is your book value. Simple as that. So once again, always start with your cost first. Get your cost. So whatever gets that asset ready for its intended use, you go ahead and put that into the cost. Then from there, you get your formula, cost minus salvage value, divided by useful life, and you get 62244 for your annual depreciation expense. Multiply that times four years to get your accumulated depreciation. Then from there, you get your book value by doing cost minus accumulated depreciation. And that's it. Hopefully that was helpful for y'all today. I know that's a few different steps, but feel free to rewind this video, watch it a few times. And of course, comment below if you have any questions. I love to answer questions and make sure that you can fully understand it. That is incredibly important to me. Also, if you have another video topic that's accounting related that you need some help on, go ahead and comment below, ask me about it, and I can go ahead and create another video for you. And of course, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I would really appreciate it. And thanks for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video in this series on units of activity method. Alrighty, bye-bye.